So in 1979, when I spent a year at an American high school, this girl comes up to me and she says, Hi, my name's Gretchen. I'm German, just like you. My great-great-grandfather came from Germany to the United States. And I had to tell her, well, you know, if you come that far back, my relatives, or I am actually not German because uh, my relatives came from Poland, they were Jewish, they came from France, they were Huguenots. And actually Germany hasn't existed that long, so this term is pretty much absurd. It would just be silly and um, ugly, aside from the fact that it, it reminds one of Bioladen. Um, if it were not paired with another term, much more devious, I think, that is Pastdeutsch. And Pastdeutsch is, I think, in the same vein with Biodeutsch invented to strip away rights and representation from citizens in Germany. Um, and this is very disturbing. I came across this word the first time when I was trying to enroll my son in public school in Berlin, Kreuzberg, and the director of the school tried to um, tell me that um, it wouldn't be, I wouldn't, my son would not be put into a class with migrant kids or so-called past German kids that they were taking care to keep the German kids, the bio-German kids together. But she wasn't using that word bio-German, she, she was just using past German. Uh, it was very shocking to me. What you have here, just to give you a bit of context to the image you're seeing, that's Georgia Sodi. Um, photographer from Nigeria photographing Kassel, uh, citizens, people in Kassel, uh, another place where 144 languages are spoken. Uh, what you see here is Germany's first Fußgängerzone, and this was invented by, as I, as I think, by someone called Mr. Green, formerly Mr. Grün who introduced Fußgängerzone back into Europe as a kind of revenge on being thrown out of the country during the Nazi time. Bye.